Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in this uh, video I want to talk about this uh, difference between uh, SharePoint Designer and Flow, uh, and then how you can do the workaround. So specifically in SharePoint Designer, um, there is a action, it's called as a set field and current item, um, and with that action you can actually go in and call the columns from the SharePoint list and uh, you know, assign values to it, um, and you, know, you can go ahead and do that. Now on Flow side, this it does not exist um, on flow you have something called as update item uh, which if you think about it so yeah it actually does the same thing but when I show you the demos over here uh, there is subtle differences between the two and that subtle differences can actually make uh, you know can turn out to be a big deal so that's why um, I wanted to show that to you and then also show that um, in in the flow side even though we don't have the uh, set field there is something called a set variable, and that actually is a good workaround to kind of get almost a similar functionality as the set field and current item. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that to you, and it'll actually start making more sense. So um, now here's the flow. But before we go and jump into that, let me show you the two lists that I have. Um, the lists are pretty simple. Uh, it's just some place where I can go ahead and you know gather some information about an event, uh, see if the person went ahead and registered for that. It's, it's just a very simple place over here um, to list a way to just gather that information. Um, but for this list, the first one over here, I have a workflow running using SharePoint Designer. And so what the workflow actually does is um, when a new item is put in, it obviously starts by uh, the log over here, the workflow is started. And then it goes and checks to see that whoever was putting in the entry, did they put in a registration date? If the registration date wasn't put in, then it immediately puts in today's date. Um, and then after that, it also goes to see um, the status. You know, when the person went ahead and submitted information, uh, was the status already considered as registered or was it blank? Because if it was blank, go ahead and put that as registered. So the, the workflow is pretty simple. There's no emphasis on the workflow over here as the logic of it. Um, but what, what I do want to point out is um, I have focused on this function over here. It's called as set. Uh, so if I go ahead and start typing in set, and I just hit that, it's set field to value. That's the action that exists over here. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't have that on the flow side. So now that I have this over here, let me just go and not save. Yep, I kept it over here. Let's go ahead and actually just put in an entry say user one the event is say a beginner level event and i'll purposely not fill in the registration because the flow will take care of that or the sharepoint designers flow, workflow will take care of that um, so it's running over here um, and then while it's running what i've actually done is i've turned on the versioning of this list um, and so that will actually help me show uh, how many versions i actually have recorded over here and then we'll do a comparison on the flow side as well so now let me refresh that. As you can see that I've got two flows over here. Uh, one is for the new one when a new item is added. Um, and the other one for the edit, which we can ignore for now. Um, so it is running. Let's refresh it. And it completed successfully. So what happened is uh, we got the username. Um, I went ahead and picked beginner. Uh, but now because of the flow, it act, uh, the workflow, it acted the, uh, added the registration date and it added the status. Um, so now what I want to do is let's go ahead and refresh that again. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, different versions. So I go to version history over here. And in version history, you see I only have two versions. So the first version over here is the entry that I put in. Remember I said I picked in user one. That's what I typed in. And I put in beginner. Now what the workflow did is it went ahead and put in the status register and, and also put in the registration date. So let's go back and look at that. So in, when I go back to my SharePoint designer, I went ahead and used set. Um, so I went ahead and used set to get the registration data today. And I used set again to get the status to register. Going back, that's exactly what happened. As, see, so there's only two versions over here. First version is the actual manual entry that I put in, uh, which was the username and beginner. And then the second version was the workflow. Now, key, key thing you keep in mind that the workflow that I built using SharePoint Designer only put in a second version, just a uh, second version. 
there was an aversion for the registered and then not a third one for the registration date. So keep that in mind because we're going to switch over now to flow and you'll see that uh, I've got two flows over there. And if you use the update item, there will be actually three versions and then how we can go and fix that using the uh, variable. So now here is the second list. And for the second list, I'm going to go ahead and actually make sure that I've got the first flow running. And the first flow is where I've got the um, the update item over there. So let me go in and just take a look at that flow. That This flow is tied to that same SharePoint list, but in this flow, I'm specifically using the update item SharePoint action. And that again over here. So the update item over here is doing the exact same thing. I'm going ahead and updating the registration date uh, in SharePoint Design, we use today. In Flow, we just use this expression called um, UCT now, time central now. Um, and then in uh, SharePoint Design, I just typed in registered over there. Uh, over here, I'm just on Flow, I'm also doing the same thing, registered. But um, in, in Flow, you have to call the update item uh, to do that. And so that's what I did over here. But um, let's go and run that. So I just want to make sure, yep, I got that now. Go to this list and user one. I'll try to put the entries the exact same. Um, yep, and I'll go and save that. So flow is running in the back end. It's connecting. So let me just go over here, take a look at it just to make sure if there's any. Yep, I see one succeeded in seven seconds ago. Let me refresh that. And it is done. Now, let's go and check, take a look at that versioning. So version history, see, this is what I was talking about. Because right now in that flow that I've built, um, I've used the two update um, items, which is the SharePoint action. So the first one over here, the first version is the manual entry that I typed in. That's when I put the user one and beginner. We know that. The second was the registration date. That is actually coming in from the first update action. And see, so when you, when you put that update action, it actually goes ahead and updates directly the SharePoint list on the fly, and that is actually recorded as an entry. So this first one is recorded over there. Then the second update item also went ahead and saved it directly to SharePoint list, and that goes ahead and adds another entry. That, that's why you're getting three different versions over here. Now, this is not a bad thing by you know by any case, but if you are keeping track of your versioning histories over here, um, if you've got a lot of edit workflows which are you know they don't have any conditions for your edit workflows, it's just everything is any any edit happens it goes and kicks off a task. Well, now you're gonna be have a little bit of a problem over here um, because it might not match the conditions because you're seeing just for one entry, uh, two edits happen. Uh, one edit was for registration day, the other edit was for status, and so, so you want to keep that in track in mind. Um, so now what I'll do is I'm going to switch off um, this workflow, which was the original one. Let me turn that off. Let me turn this one on, and we'll take a quick look at that. Um, in this one, what I've done is I've started using the variables over here. Um, so the quick thing about variables is you have to go first go and assign one. And then you can go and use it. And I've talked about that in the uh, blog, which will be uh, posted soon. Uh, so that's what I did. I went ahead and assigned a variable for a registration variable. Uh, registration, even though it is a date, I've just put the type as string because these are all the options that are available. Um, I just put that as a string. Uh, Boolean or maybe integer could be another one, but string works the best in this case. Um, then the status variable was just text. So I put that over here. And then after that, uh, I went ahead and assigned the values to the variables. I went and assigned the value to this variable, which was the date, which was again the exact same thing, which was the date I got from the expression. And then I also went ahead and typed in the status as registered. But now I only have one update item SharePoint action. That's all I did over here. So now let's go ahead and rerun or go ahead and put in another entry. And we'll make sure that this time this is the one that's active. This one is disabled. So let's see what happens. So I'll put in user two. Let me change the event to say intermediate and save it. See what happens. Okay, so it's this one over here. Let's 
succeeded five seconds ago, so it's probably done. Go back in. That's completed. So now let's take a look at the version. And now you see I only have two versions over here. This is the manual entry that I put in. And then this is the one from the flow. Uh, because remember, now we've used the two variables. The variables went in and gathered the information, but we only used that one update item, SharePoint Action. And when that ran, I got the second version over here. So this um, process of doing it is the closest match to what you do in SharePoint Designer. In SharePoint Designer, you use the set field value but on the flow side, you use the set variable um, and the outcomes of the two are almost very similar, if not the same. So I, I wanted to bring this to you guys' attention because right now there is no set field replacement in SharePoint and in, in flow, right? Because there's the update item. But if you use this approach to use the variables, um, then it's as if, as good as using the set, um, uh, the set field value over there. So I hope that this helps you guys, um, especially those people who are doing starting to do migrations from SharePoint, uh, designer type of workflows or what to flow uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and if those type of workflows actually have the set field value, then um, you know then you can use this logic to make sure that the versions don't get too crazy and your workflows or, or your edit workflows don't get too crazy. Um, also, if you know you do still have the need, if you're building flows. Um, you know, and you have a need for that set field value, um, then, well, now you can just use the set variable and you should be good to go. So I hope this helps. Thanks.